What's up? My name's Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got something pretty cool for you, especially if you're waiting for something like this. Basically, if you don't already know, I've coded an account switcher that's currently open source and available for anyone to download and use. For the last two years or so, it's been available, but only for Steam. Basically, you open it up, you pick an account, and after double clicking on it, you can switch to it instantaneously. Steam basically closes, switches accounts, and opens back up. Even if you have two-factor available, as long as you've previously put in the two-factor code and you're able to reboot your computer while staying logged in, which everyone should be able to do, you'll be able to use the account switcher to switch between Steam accounts. However, up until this point, I don't know that there's actually been any development around this, but I've now created an open source origin account switcher as well, and it's built into the new beta version of this. Currently, it's the 18th of April, 2021, and the beta was released one or two days ago, but regardless, there's now an origin account switcher built into it. There's currently a stable version available, which you'll find on the GitHub. However, the beta version is something you'll need to join the Discord for, at least for now. I'll have a link to the GitHub, and you'll usually use the download button up here to get to download the account switcher, but it'll only have the stable version as there's quite a few thousand people using this, but it's the old Steam specific version. I'll have to change this text up here as well. In order to get the new beta version, all you have to do is join my community Discord, which is linked over here, and it'll be linked in the description as well as the comments down below. If you have a look under the Techno Account Switcher section, you'll see a bug report channel as well as an updates channel where you'll get links and updates about the program. Because it is still very early in beta access, as in I've only just completed it today, I am looking for people to look at it and give me their thoughts on how it works, what I could improve, etc, etc. It does seem to be a pretty limited process, but it does work pretty well. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop into the Discord. So over here, I've pulled across my community Discord. On the left hand side, you can see under the techno account switcher section over here, I've got announcements, which is something you can follow and subscribe to, but I won't be posting too many things here. The updates section over here, where I'll be posting updates about the software, and the general account switcher channel over here for talking about the account switcher, as well as bug reports all the way down here. Anyway, if you want to take part in the beta, head across to the updates section and you'll find a couple of downloads over here. I'm pretty sure that I'll ship the program as such, both in 7-zip and zip format. Why is that? Well, the 7-zip format, if you have 7-zip installed, is 17 megs, while the full program is 31.2 megs. Anyway, for this guide over here, I'll be downloading the latest zip version over here. All you have to do is download the zip and open it up. After it opens up, you'll see a folder inside of it, as well as all of these files here. All that I'm going to do is extract this folder to my desktop. There's no installer currently, although there is an installer for the previous version, and if you're watching this at some stage in the future, when I've fully released it and it's out of beta, there will be an installer for this too. Anyway, opening up the folder, we have a bunch of files in here, but what we're looking for is Techno Account Switcher. Now, you may think that you can just launch this up, but it probably won't work for you, even if you use your PC a hell of a lot. Why is that? Well, it's built in the brand new .NET 5 platform with a couple of specific features that you'll need to go ahead and make sure you have available on your computer before it will work properly. So in the description, as well as the GitHub page over here, you'll find steps that you need to follow in order to get it to work under the required runtime section under the beta version section. So as you can see, Microsoft.NET 5 desktop runtime and ASP.NET Core 5.0 runtime available here as well as the WebView 2 runtime available here. In the description down below, you'll find a link to both of these, which I'll both be opening up now. Although the WebView runtime one over here will simply immediately start a download as soon as it's open. To download .NET 5 Desktop Runtime and ASP.NET Core Runtime, you head across to this first link in the description down below. At some stage in the future, I do hope to have some sort of installer that'll come with it, that'll go ahead and grab the rest of these so that you don't have to worry about it. But for now, at least in the beta, head across to this page and click Download X64 under Run Desktop Apps. As such, after it starts, go back a page and under Run Server Apps on the right, click Download Hosting Bundle. And another program will download. You've now downloaded three different pieces of software. You can start by installing the X64 Desktop Installer, the Server Installer, and then finally the Edge Web Installer, though it doesn't matter what order you install us in, as long as these three programs are installed, it'll work properly. And yes, they're all official from Microsoft. They have nothing to do with me. It's literally their cutting edge tech. 
Minimizing this page, you should now be able to open up technoaccountswitcher.exe as such. You'll see a little window pops up, and currently, at least at the time of recording this, there is an update available, and unlike the previous version of the software, clicking this over here, you'll see an auto updated window. And instead of re-downloading the entire piece of software per update, it's now got partial updates. So you can click the button, it'll download maybe 30 kilobytes of updates, and you'll have a working brand new version of the program. Once it's restarted, you can see over here a very basic layout, which I'll probably work on with a Steam account switcher on the left, where it'll immediately populate with all of the accounts on your computer. You can double click to switch accounts, but if we head back, you'll notice an origin account switcher over here that's currently empty. This is what you came to the video for, and we're finally here. So to begin, we need to actually sign into an account using Origin. So I'll simply fire up Origin and wait for it to start. When prompted for account details, simply fill it in. Though of course, before you do that, make sure that Keep Me Signed In is checked. After clicking Sign In, the window will vanish and you'll sign into Origin as usual. The program has done nothing to Origin itself. But now that we've signed in and are waiting for it to populate, you can see I'm now on my account. I'll push it to the side and head back to my account switcher. All that we have to do here is click Save Current and give it a name. Unlike the Steam version, this can't detect the name of the account that you're currently logged in with. So I'll call it, say, Technobo. After entering a name, I'll click Add Current Origin Account, and boom, it's now on the list. One of the annoying things about this is that because it's built so differently, it's not just changing one line of text, because it's copying files, you need to make sure that if you're going to swap accounts, you need to do it through the account switcher. So in Origin, don't go ahead and click sign out at any point, otherwise this process will break. Of course, if it does and you've added an account, you'll need to right click it and click forget, then re-add the account by clicking save current. In order to log into a new account, click add new over here, you'll notice that the origin window vanishes and it'll say that it saved your previous account data. Basically, every time that you're using Origin, the data changes slightly, meaning that this program needs to save the most updated version in order to switch properly. Otherwise, it just doesn't switch at all. Now that we have this window open, let's sign into a second account. Once again, keep me signed in. Once we sign in, the program will open up and we're dropped back onto the main menu. There we go, I'm now signed into another Origin account. Pushing it across to the side, let's head back to my account switcher and click Save Current. Again, I'll give it a name. I'll call it, say, Troubleshoot, spelling it correctly. I'll click Add Current Account, and boom, there we go. You can see that it's got the profile picture of your account, even though it's a bit low res, if you decide to scroll in a bit. But regardless, there's your accounts. I'll leave Origin open right in the background over here, and head across to my account switcher right on top of it. Let's click my first account, and I can either double click it, right click it, and click Swap to Account, or click Login in the very bottom right. So, clicking Login, you'll notice that Origin vanishes immediately, the page refreshes, and it saves your current account. Now that Origin's starting up, you'll see in just a moment that when it does actually open up, we'll be logged into the account with the smiley face over here. There we go, we're logged into the other account. If I head across to my games library, you'll see only Apex. But let's head back to my Troubleshoot account. I'll double click this time, you can see it closes, and when it reopens, we'll be dropped back into the other account. So let's wait for exactly that to happen. And there we go. When I logged into the other account, my game library, you'll see there's a whole bunch of games here when there weren't before. Pretty cool. So the account switcher does work. It was a little bit annoying to get working properly as there's a bunch of files that need to be copied and swapped out in order to switch accounts. But regardless, there's a very early version of this that does work. So if you'd like to join me on this, do make sure to join the Discord, once again, link down below, and make sure to check out the GitHub page. It would be highly appreciated. Now, because it does come with an auto updater, it should be pretty easy for me to push updates. But if you do join the Discord, make sure that you head across to the announcements channel for my account switcher and have a look for this message over here. React to this message to be notified when updates go live. Click this button and you'll join the alerts group over here so that you'll be notified at any major updates, such as the one over here talking about the auto updater not working, you need to download the latest version of the software. While I doubt something like this will happen again, it could happen at any point, meaning I'm unable to push updates for that specific version and you'll be stuck there until you re-download it again from the GitHub. And of course, on top of that, right now you have to download it from the Discord over here, but eventually it'll be fully available on the GitHub when it gets out of the beta phase. To download it then, all you have to do is click the download button over here 
and you'll be instantly taken across to the download section, of course, for the latest version. This is the previous version, last released in June 2020. And of course, there's the installers over here. But anyway, that's about it. It is a pretty big download to get started, but of course, it's because it's so easy to add other platforms. I put a lot of effort into making this modular, and it seems that it's actually paid off. It was incredibly quick for me to get Origin set up on the program, and hopefully I'll expand to other platforms like Uplay and the rest at some point. But anyways, there's now an Origin account switcher and a Steam account switcher, and they're built together. That's about it. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.